cool thing, angular momentum or whatever, right? Uh, when in your high school asks you to solve the pendulum, it's pretty tough. But if now put in Lagrangian and Hamiltonian framework, you can solve the uh, equation of motion very easily, okay? You know that the physicists have this tool, and that is good enough. But you need to know the equations, right? So the main point is now, this is all classical. Now, when you go to the quantum mechanics, we still continue to use the Hamiltonian. And in this process, we still have two basic variables, what are they, for Hamiltonian? Position and momentum. They are the conjugate variable. And now you find there's something interesting. Isn't that the uncertainty principle tells us that you cannot measure position and momentum accurately at the same time? And that is where you come with the quantization. Uh, when the two operators does not commute with each other, then you have the quantization. And let's take a look how this works, right? So you can treat this as a new class, nothing to do with what I discussed earlier, right? If you just want to do this as a math. The Hamiltonian of the simple harmonic oscillator, we already say that is P squared divided by 2M plus KX squared divided by 2, right? I do not use half mv square because v, v is not the conjugated variable in Hamiltonian, right? I use p squared divided by 2m, right? That is the first thing. With the knowledge that omega, just a parameter, I define it as k divided by m, okay? Square root k divided by m. We know there's a reason because in classical mechanics, that is the natural frequency of the system, the resonant frequency. So because of this, I can also write it as p square divided by m, 2m, and then the k, what is k? k becomes omega square times m divided by 2x square. Okay, still classical. And then now you need to trust me, right? Uh, they do have a lot of reason and then it match the experiment. In quantum mechanics, of course we know that we need to convert the conjugated variable P and X to operators. P hat and X hat. And we have been doing operators earlier, right? It's just, just a matrix. So now you don't, don't worry about that, whether it's uh, you, difficult to see matrix because you need to express it in the basis, in a certain basis. Now it's just the equation, but you just agree that they need to be converted to the uh, operator. And maybe let me tell you, what are this operator? What is Px? Px operate on a state with definite momentum, give me the momentum as the eigenvalue. Maybe this is a little bit difficult to understand. How about this one? X operate on an eigenstate with X, give me, I mean operate on X, give me the X as the eigenvalue, right? So position of a particle can be anywhere. This is continuous, not, not the qubit we are talking about, spin up and spin down. My po this particle can be at this location, can be at that location. If I have to use the position operator, operates on that state, I will get the value of that position. Again, x inside the cat is just a notation. I can say that particle at location x, cat, right? So do not get this confused. X is the same as particle at location X, and then put inside the cat. And you now you do it Hindi, Chinese, Japanese, it's still talking about the same thing, right? A state of the particle, yeah. Uh, Professor, 
Yes, then they need to be a matrix. Very good, right? How about this X? X is a state, right? How do you express a state in a matrix or vector? Like in the spin, right? I say a state, it will be two, two row, right? First row talking about spin up, amount of spin up. Second row talking about the amount of spin down, right? What do you think? What would be this X if I matrix? express it as a column. What are the basic states of position? And it turned out to be every point in this universe is a basis state. So this is an infinite continuous basis. Right? So if I say my location is at this point 5, x equal to 5, then you basically have this, zero, and then here you have one. The rest is zero and infinite. This refers to the location five. That is the state, right? So if you really want to express it, but we are not going to do that. But this is the main point that you understand the operator. Every operator has its eigenvalue and eigenvector, right? The eigenvector of the position operator is just the position, any point in this universe. And it's eigenvalue x. So similarly for p, I apply to a state, which is p. Momentum equals to 15, for example, with the right unit, right? 15. Then I get 15 in front, right? So you will have a matrix. We don't know what this matrix is. We Later we will see that. But however, quantum mechanics tells us that. Uh, we did not go through the details. So if you have time, you can read J.J. Sakura's book, the first chapter. A little bit difficult, but he really explained very well. Right? We have this relationship. Do you remember what is the square of two operator? Square bracket of two operator? Not probability, square, not the arrow bracket, square. This is what I'm saying here. X. Do you remember the commutation and anti commute Yeah, this is the commutator, yeah? Equals to, because it's operator equal to X hat, P hat, minus P hat, X hat, they are not necessarily equal to zero because they won't commute. This equal to I H bar. And this is the source of the uncertainty principle, okay? You can say this is a crash course on quantum mechanics, but just accept it for some of the things I say. You can think deeper and talk to me. But the main point is that from classical mechanics, using Hamiltonian, I am going to go to quantum mechanics by applying the operator to them. So basically, now what is my Hamiltonian? It's an operator, and it is equal to p hat square, which is a matrix square, plus omega square m divided by 2 x hat square. Is that okay? And that's the linkage, right? I could have just give you this, say, okay, uh, for simple harmonic oscillator, the Hamiltonian is this. Just like what we did in QB, right? I directly give you the Hamiltonian, h bar divided by two times the spin matrix, and then times the magnetic field times the gyro magnetic ratio, and I say this is the Hamiltonian of the system. And now I give you this. You can get the same thing also for that one. but. I go from classical to here to give you some link, linkage, which myself might not really understand well. And that depends on you, how deep you can understand this uh, transformation. If not, you just know there's a, such a linkage. Okay? So the final word is H equal to P squared divided by 2N plus this term. Now, why do we want to do this? Because now we want to introduce something called creation and annihilation operator, which is very useful in, uh, in the treatment later. 
And this one, you just take it for granted. It's just a definition and it works. I will show you that it works. The annihilation, annihilation. I start with the annihilation operator. Our P and Q are operator already, they are matrix. A is called A. I put a head here. I define it as this M omega divided by 2h bar, x hat plus i p hat divided by m omega. It's a long equation, you don't need to memorize. All it's doing is just that this matrix is equal to combining these two matrices in this way. That's it. It is given. But it has a special role where we'll show you that it actually kill a h bar omega energy from the simple harmonic oscillator. That's why it's called annihilation. And this concept is going to be very useful later uh, in second quantization and even other physics, all those uh, complicated stuff. Right. And by the way, uh, should X and P be Hermitian or not? The position operator and momentum operator are they Hermitian? Do you expect them to be Hermitian or not? Hmm? Yes. Why? Very good. Because position and momentum operator correlates to a measurement operator, right? So you uh, will got the real value. So they need to be Hermitian. Okay, but now once I do this combination, the annihilation operator is not Hermitian, right? Just, just, uh, just I mean, a side note, right? Uh, let me just say uh, this are uh, Hermitian, right? Because they related to observable, X and P can be observed, but annihilation operator cannot be observed. We also have que something called creation operators, operator. Now I call it a dagger because it is a dagger. It is just a, a, a joint conjugate of A because I do this, right? You may say, isn't that the X and P need to be dagger also? Right? If I say A dagger is really A dagger, right? The I will get negative, and then X and P, isn't that I should put dagger? Correct? Uh, do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah. Because they have Hermitian. That's, that's what I'm trying to fish for, trick you. X hat equal to X, P hat equal to P. They are Hermitian, right? So. Do this. So we created this too. Um, now, uh, I do want to practice a little bit on the math, right? Uh, so I could have just give you the results, but I would like to practice a little bit because I want you to get familiar with this or at least not afraid of this. What is A and A dagger commutator, right? What does it mean? A, A dagger, Minus a dagger a. Oh, very good. Thank you. So with this, then I'm, I will start doing this. They have the same prefactor, but square root. So when they do multiplication, they just gone, right? So basically what I'm doing here is x dagger plus i p divided by, not x dagger, x hat times x hat minus i p divided by by m omega, the whole thing minus x hat minus i p divided by m omega times x hat plus i p divided by m omega, right? If they commute, then this should be zero, right? But you need to multiply it out, right? Uh, so this one, I want to go through the quickly. The first term is what? x hat squared, x times x. The second term is 
I x hat p divided by m omega. I need to follow the sequence x times p, right? So this is negative. The third one is I p times x divided by m omega, right? They are not the same. The fourth one is plus because I times I is negative, so it's plus p hat square divided by m omega, the whole thing square. Okay. Similarly, I'm going to multiply, subtract the whole thing by x hat. I go a little bit faster, we're out of time. Plus i x hat p divided by m omega because of this term times this term. And then minus i p hat x divided by m omega. And finally, it's plus p hat square divided by m omega square. So right. Position. Yeah. They may not, may not come new. Yes. But what is x times p? Plus uh, p minus p times x. We told you it is equal to i h bar. Right? So basically, the whole thing becomes. Yes, from quantum mechanics. Right, so let me just finalize this. So xp times px is ih bar. So uh, minus px is actually also I take out negative i m omega. Then the whole thing will be ih bar on here. And then the other side is also the same, but it has a negative, right? So again, I take this out ih bar. Right, and then i times i is uh, negative one. So this one you get two. So two h bar mu omega. This equal to one. Right. Sorry, I'm rushing. But uh, basically, they are not commuting with each other by one. This is one is very important. Later you will see. Then they what they become a racing and lowering operator. Okay. I show this. I really want you to go through this math. Right. Don't take it for granted that you can swap them. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice spring break. Ooh.